Hi, and welcome to Dark Basic Professional Sprite Tutorial 1. In the last tutorial, I brought you up to speed on the basics of image manipulation and handling. Today, we're going to learn how to go from that and explore the word of sprite operation. In this tutorial, I will use sprites commands to replicate what we did uh, with the image commands, but to change things up a little, I'm also going to move the sprite by using our mouse instead of the keys um, in order to show you that you can control these things with multiple methods. Um, for this tutorial we will need the same images that we downloaded for our primary tutorial. If you don't have these already um, please look in the Sprite Tutorial Zero um, for the links um, under my YouTube channel um, or click on my video description for this video and uh, and you can download them there if you are not sure what to do with these files and you'll need to run through tutorial zero so let's have a look at the source code we're going to be producing I threatened you in the last tutorial with the usage of types and other variable types so if you don't understand these you'll need to go off and get my DVD tutorials or you'll need to read the principles documentation in the language itself so we're going to start off with type objects I'm going to assume you know what all this is about, so I won't be explaining it to you. And we're going to create several parameters, so um, x as uh, integer, y as integer, uh, id as integer. I don't actually need to type in integer because it will assume anything without a symbol is automatically an integer but uh, for my own habits and peace of mind I prefer doing it this way um, R as integer this won't be used in this tutorial but it will be used in the next tutorial um, H as integer and W as integer and we're gonna end type um, now, just quickly explain what these are. This is the x-axis of the um, sprite, the y-axis. This is the ID. I'm going to be using this for both the sprite ID and image ID, so it's going to do twice the work. This is going to deal with rotation, which will occur in the next tutorial. Um, this is the um, height of the sprite in question, and this is the width of the sprite in question. So if you've been through the primer tutorial, you can and guess what those are going to be used for. I'm also going to set up my window resolution to... Um, 1024 times 768 because that's the resolution of the background image we're going to be using. Uh, you can also use the um, set display mode command as well, which I demonstrated in the previous tutorial. Um, next, we're going to set up some globals. So, global background as objects and global player. As objects. Now uh, you don't strictly speaking need to global everything here because we're not using functions or anything but it's a good habit to get into and as I'll be expanding this source code later um, it's a good idea to get into this kind of habits just in case I decide to throw in a few functions and things. Um, now we're going to set background.id and I've typed that in wrong that should be an L so background.id equals 1. So you can guess again what this is. This is going to be the image. Uh, that should be background, not black. Sorry. Uh, okay, uh, background.id equals 1. Um, so this is the ID of the image and the sprite. We're going to be using this, this uh, command twice, or this um, line twice, I should say. And we're going to type in player.id equals 2. So the background is going to be 1, the player is going to be 2. Now we're going to start off with our usual um, starting code, or my usual starting code, which is sync on, sync rate 60, uh, backdrop on, and 
auto cam off which isn't strictly speaking needed for this particular tutorial but again it's a bit of a habit of mine um, if you don't understand what this little block of text does then uh, you can check my spinning cube tutorial um, the very first one I uploaded in regards to Dark Basic Professional, it's not got audio or anything, but it will explain to you um, the basics of these commands and tell you exactly why I'm using them. Alternatively, of course, you can always get my DVDs as well. They will explain the same thing. Um, now we're going to load up the images. So same commands as the previous tutorial. Load image, open quote media, forward slash back drop dot png and we're going to end that with a close quote and comma then background dot id so we're just giving it the index value of one uh, load image media forward slash uh, ship sprite one dot PNG, um, comma, player dot ID. Now I'll reiterate this. I did say it in the previous tutorial, but I will remind you again. If we click on file name here, click on these three dots, it's a good idea to make sure it's taking place in our project folder. As you can see, I'm just reusing the um, Sprite Tutorial Zero folder here. I should really have created a fresh one, but never mind. Um, but you need to make sure the application.exe is in the root of the project folder otherwise it will not find this media file so if you're getting errors where um, media files cannot be loaded um, then you'll need to make sure that the case is accurate so you need to make sure it's uh, all lowercase you'll need to make sure it's a forward slash and you'll need to replicate the file name precisely and as long as that exe launches from the project folder um, it will find all the media however if this application launches from the temporary folder which is what happens when you don't have a project set up correctly um, then you'll just get a bunch of error messages saying cannot find uh, that particular file so uh, that's the image commands Next we need to get some information. So we're just going to set up um, the location of the sprites. Sorry, the uh, we sorry, we're going to set player.x and player.y um, to the middle of the screen. So we're going to type in player dot x equals um, screen width open parentheses close parentheses divided by two so that's finding the middle of the screen and player dot y equals screen width open parentheses close parentheses divided by two again and now the bit we've all been waiting for we're going to use some sprite commands so sprite background dot id comma zero comma zero comma background dot id so as you can see this command is fairly self-explanatory we're creating a sprite with the sprite command we're assigning that sprite with the same id as the image so in this case one we're placing it at zero comma zero so in the same way we pasted the image in our previous tutorial um, this will basically set the image background um, there now the thing you'll need, need to know is it's not in the main loop so once the sprite object is created it is treated as an object in the same way a 3d cube is created um, you can then create a do sync and loop and the 3d object will always be there the same is true for sprites once we've created this sprite and positioned it we don't need to keep pasting the sprite or positioning the sprite on screen it will automatically assume that the sprite is always there and uh, if we go on to sprite player dot id comma player dot x and player dot y comma player id and again we've done exactly the same thing now uh, this command here or this parameter I should say um, basically 
assigns an image number to the sprite. It can be changed at any time if you wish. Um, but we're just going to stick with these static sprites here. So it's always going to be referred to as player.id. And uh, now we're just going to finish off our program with do sync and loop. And uh, if we run the program now, as you can see, um, we've got our program loaded up. And I think I've got some of those axes inverted, my mistake. I'm sure you've all spotted my mistake. Um, up here, I've got screen width and screen width twice. I should have screen height there, my mistake. And if we compile that program again, you'll notice that we've now got the ship more or less in center of the screen. But again, in the same way as before in our previous tutorial, the ship isn't perfectly centered to the screen. Um, I will reiterate that by adding in another line of code. We are going to type in. Now, while you don't need to type in sprite, as I've just demonstrated, actually, um, the sprites just loaded uh, that we didn't need to paste the images or anything um, sync didn't destroy the data it treated the sprites as the object and that's the difference between images and sprites is they become objects rather than uh, just images you're constantly pasting to the screen um, so what I'm going to do now is type in a little bit of source code that will basically send well it won't center it will place a sprite um, at the same coordinates as your mouse. So we're just going to be moving the sprite around using our mouse. And we're going to do that with the same commands. We're going to use sprite again. Now, if you use paste sprite, um, which I have experimented with, um, because we've got the background sprite, for some reason it's drawing behind that. I've tried playing with priorities and things, and I can't seem to get the paste sprite command to actually put the sprite on top of the background so I'm probably doing something there and I'll need to do some research into that problem but the solution for that if you're hitting the same problem is just to use a sprite command again so if we use sprite player dot id um, and we're going to uh, type in mouse x open parentheses close parentheses and mouse y open parentheses close parentheses comma player ID again and what this will basically do is make our mouse or rather it will it will place the sprite on the screen at the uh, same coordinates as the mouse so if we compile this program you'll now see that our little ship is moving around the screen but you'll also notice that the ship isn't centered onto the mouse again so um, we now need to compensate for the image and we need to actually set it um, we need to offset the image so if we uh, we um, type in some more code now what we will basically need to do is uh, type in three new lines of code and we're going to do this after the sprite section and we're going to type in player dot h uh, equals sprite height um, open parentheses player dot id close parentheses and we're going to divide that by two now what we're basically doing here is we're setting up um, a variable with the half value of the image so if our image is 32 by 32 then this will basically um, return the value of 16 um, now you'll notice that in the previous tutorial we used image height. It works exactly the same way. This time we're using sprite height. And as you can guess, it's getting the um, sprite or the height of the particular sprite. Um, as you start scaling sprites and playing around with that kind of thing, then this will become um, more useful. You could use the image height here and just get the image height from the... Um, player.id as well but I want to get you used to working with sprites directly um, so again if we're scaling sprite or whatever then this command should um, produce 
um, the same result no matter um, what we've done to the actual sprite itself. So we're going to go player.w as well equals sprite uh, width open parentheses uh, player.id close parentheses divided by 2 and now the magic command that's going to uh, fix our sprite so it's at the middle of the cursor is going to be offset sprite player.id comma player.w comma player.h now I could of course have just put sprite height and divided that and put it directly into the line um, but I prefer to keep these variables and things organized so I can call them at any time in the program and because this is source code I'm planning to build on for the next set of tutorials um, having these sorts of uh, um, variables and things set out from the outset as you can think of them and plan for them um, is a good habit to get into so now if we compile our program again and we move the program over. As you can see, it's now at the dead center of our mouse. So um, any um, um, slightly off center graphics that may appear is due to the image or the sprite created rather than um, it not being accurate. So if you imagine that being a box, um, the image I created in that box is slightly forward. So it's not dead center in the middle of the graphic. Um, but uh, so so if there's any error you spot there that's why but it is actually pointing to the dead center of that particular sprite um, because I've got transparency set up and everything uh, or rather because it does it itself um, uh, if there's any uh, visual difference that you want to account for that's why um, you'll also notice that we use sprites and we haven't used any of the transparency parameters we did before um, if you recall in the previous tutorial which is close this program um, in order to get transparency I had to put one there or oh, that's not true actually so I had to put one at the end of the paste image command in order to get the transparency to work and um, sprites automatically um, deal with the transparency which is why I like PNG files I also showed you in the previous tutorial how you can make your own PNG files using GIMP and um, um, how you can set up transparency so it's all handled automatically you can set up transparency yourself based on a color key um, but PNG images are a better way of getting into it um, because uh, they're a lot more accurate and, and, and there's a lot less programming involved so that's basically uh, reproducing what we did in our previous tutorial and we're using the mouse itself we've learnt how to offset the sprite we've learnt how to create the sprite we've learned how to load the image um, we've learned how to place the image at the center of the screen which is what that basically does and we've learned how to move our sprite around using the mouse commands in the next tutorial um, we will be dealing with things like rotation and uh, and other ways of moving it so uh, thanks for watching this tutorial I hope you understand a little bit more about sprites than you did before the next tutorial in this series is going to be available after the 29th of July um, 2011 um, and we will be discovering a new way of handling sprites and movement so please comment rate and subscribe mm -hmm.